channel. My name is Kimberly. And I'm Roxy. And together we are 10 Travel. Travel. Point oh three. <laughs> and today we have a special video because we have tips and information from our recent trip to Egypt. Here we go. All right, so for our Egypt itinerary, we only had one week, which is seven days. But out of those seven days, we don't count two days because it's flying. Because from here, from LA, we're from LA, to um, Egypt is 20 hours. So that cuts a lot of um, travel time. So what we did was we spent two days in Cairo, two days in Hergada, and one in Luxor. We try to um, see as much as we could, with, try to cramp as many activities as we could in five days. And I know in Egypt, cannot be done in a week i think for egypt we need like what like a whole month because it's just so big it's huge and one thing that people don't know that's something that we learned is that everything is scattered it's not within like close range everything no. is far so for us we decided to fly just because it cuts some time off the driving and also maybe there's people that are going to relate to us that we can take two week vacations we can take a month vacation you know so for us we try to see as much as we could in a week and you know, with the flying to different places, it's not that bad. It's like an hour, two hours, top most. Mm -hmm. And then with the driving, um, it is a, <laughs> in Egypt, it's a whole different world when you're driving there, but. We you, felt safe. We felt safe. We felt safe. We felt very safe. And the drivers were very nice, very respectful. So I think the entire trip, we had no issues with the transportation and we flew with Egypt Air. Yeah, I'm very good at airline. We wanted to show you a map of how we navigated through Egypt. From Cairo to Hergada was a one hour flight. From Hergada to Luxor we took a car ride and it was about 3 hours and 50 minutes each way. And then once we were in Hergada we flew back to Cairo and that was another hour. Okay, so we want to share our total trip costs because I think one thing people should understand is that we planned this trip in 2019 and we didn't get to do it till 2021. Why? Because we're pretty much forced to do it. It's either we take the trip or we lose all our money. But because we flew in December, everything is so expensive because of the holidays. Everyone goes on vacation, it's Christmas, it's New Year, and we were there for New Year. So we got locked out out of like flights and hotels because everything was so inexpensive. We had to take basically what was there. So our total cost for our flights and hotels and transportation, museums, um, tours. excursions, tours was 1,980. And that excludes the tipping and the souvenirs. Okay, so all international flights, every international tourist, before you go into immigration, please get your visa. So before you see the lines, right? You're walking in, you see the lines. To your right, if you go like this, there's a counter that says Bank of Egypt. You go there and you buy your visa. It's $25, but you need the exact change. It could be euros, it could be US dollars, whatever like your currency is. Make sure it's exact because they do not take Egyptian pound and they do not um, have any change. Or take credit cards. Or, or take credit cards. cards, they don't do that. So do not, also do not peel your sticker. Immigration will do it for you. And this is what it's gonna look like. So after you get your sticker, you go make line into immigration and then they'll do it for you. They'll stamp it and they'll place it in there and then you're good to go. One tip we highly recommend is actually exchanging your currency at the airport or upon arrival because it's going to be necessary. For everything you have to pay in Egyptian pound, they won't take, some places won't take cards, um, credit cards, any type or of card. Or US dollars. Or US dollars. They want actual Egyptian pounds and it also goes if you're going to buy souvenirs. Everybody takes cash. Nobody <laughs> wants any type of card. And that also goes with tipping. Um, Egypt is fairly cheap. It's a cheap country. Um, it's very affordable, but it does tend to add up because of the tipping. Egyptians love tips. So if they help you with your luggage, if they even give you a tip to like, oh, go eat here, they want a tip. If they help you with anything, I mean, in general. Yeah, tip your driver. If you find somebody that's gonna be transporting you all day, maybe throughout the city, give them a tip. Your tour guides, a tip. And they will sit there and look at you like, like where's my tip mm -hmm. so and, and again everyone's so nice and i we feel like they they do deserve their tips they do but that's just one thing that's very very big in egypt tipping another important tip that we highly recommend to everyone because we learned this the hard way if you don't plan on buying souvenirs or even think about even looking at them please don't even act deaf blind and just keep going walk like this <laughs> Walk like this like you don't know nobody because that's what our tour guide told us to do since the beginning and honestly it helped. 
they will put the souvenirs down your throat until you buy them. Put it this way, we ended up buying an extra luggage to bring souvenirs home of how much things that we bought. We love buying souvenirs, like don't get us, but we love it. But it sometimes does get overwhelming. It really does because you're walking and they're like a scarf, a baggie, something. And they will not stop walking next to you and telling you buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it until you do. Yeah. And even when you do, sometimes they raise, they triple, um, raise the prices and you're like, wait, you just said it was like two Egyptian pounds. They're like, no, 10. Yeah. So please, if you're not planning on spending money on souvenirs or even thinking of just like, you know, like like when you're sightseeing and you're looking at souvenirs, you're like, oh, that's cute. I'll come back and get it. Don't just, even do that. Just think about it and keep walking. And yes. I know that, you know, we didn't want to be rude, but there's times that you do have to be firm and say no and keep walking. Don't even make eye contact. Yeah, because it will bombard you and it does get a little bit, a little bit stressful, but just... Just be blind and deaf and <laughs> don't even look that way. Okay, so something that we experienced in Egypt that I'm pretty sure like any tourist that has been there probably went through the same thing is something that is so abnormal for us, is so normal for them is asking for pictures from tourists. Everywhere we went, can I take a picture with you? And it was like children and adults. Can I take a picture with you? And it was something that at first we didn't know like how to respond to that because that's something that's never happened to us. But our tour guides explained to us that everybody in Egypt when they're in school, like uh, they're required to know another language, especially if they want to go into the tourism business. So they like the diversity in the tourists. They like to see different features. They like to see different skin colors. So to them, whatever language that they're learning, they like to meet people from that country and they'll snap pictures. I mean, she kept you know, being called Shakiri where we went. You know, it was at first it was funny and you are allowed to say no, you know, but just say it in a nice way, like, no, not right now. Or maybe later, like, you know, like maybe you're yeah. looking at something you do want to take a picture. That's totally up to you. And our tour guide kind of got, bo not bothered, but he kind of got annoyed to the point that he told people like, stop taking pictures of them. Like, stop, no more. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, to us, it was like, oh my God, how cute, you know, like, you know, they're, they're being nice, but it, it does get overwhelming. But we understood why, like. Many people are, are trying to learn the language, you know, all different cultures. So yeah, it's and we went, we, it's funny because when we went to lecture, there was a little school on a field trip and right away the little kids, hi, where are you from? Where are you from? <laughs> yeah. So it, it is cute in a way, but you know, also be alert because you just don't know where these pictures will end up. So, yeah. you know, just be mindful and it's totally up to you. So for our next tip are wall pluggers. Yes, you need them because in Egypt, they use a type C plug. So this is a type of charger you're going to need with wall adapter. Um, you can get these off on Amazon. I believe we bought these like a pack of three for like what, 10 bucks, 12 mm -hmm. bucks, and they worked perfectly fine. Or you can use or order the universal one that comes with type A, B, and C, and you can use it around the world. This one is also on Amazon for 13 bucks, or you can find it at Target for like 20 bucks or something like that. But we, ha we have to have one of these. There is no way that you can um, use your personal charger to charge your phone or anything because you will need these. And on top of that, if you do plan on taking any hair dryer or any appliances like that, you will need a wall converter in order to use it because we don't know how many watts they are. So how do you recommend these? It looks like this. So another good tip is that the Wi-Fi is weak everywhere. Everywhere throughout Egypt, we do not have good Wi-Fi. No, at so all. We recommend getting the one at the airport where they sell you the Wi-Fi, just get it. Because if you're going to be on your phone, you need it. Yeah, we don't know how much it is. That's something you're gonna have to look into, but yeah, the Wi-Fi is weak everywhere. And we honestly, we regret not getting it at the airport because even though our hotels came with Wi-Fi, it was so weak. It was bad. Really, no messages were coming in, no phone calls, nothing. Not even the internet, nothing, nothing, nothing. So for our last tip, we wanna talk about Giza because we didn't really have a great experience in the hotel that we were staying in, in that area, especially because we're female solo travelers. It's not to say that everybody's going to have this experience or it's going to happen to everyone, but we're just talking out of the experience that happened to us and why we don't recommend it if you're going by yourself or even just like two girls, because we actually went with my mom and our aunt, they're, they're women as well, and all of us just, it was just kind of a little scary. 
Yeah, and even our tour guide, when she picked us up, she was like, these were her exact words. What the hell are you doing in this hotel? Those were her mm -hmm. exact words. And yes, we knew what we were booking before someone comes to tell us, well, you get what you pay for. Yes, that's true. We knew there was mixed reviews, but again, we're budget travelers. We don't have a lot of money and we wanted to wake up to the pyramid view. Who doesn't want that? And for a cheap price yes. and for New Year's Eve week, like, come on, that was something that we have been waiting for. We planned it for over a month. What ended up happening, uh, happening, long story short, is that we paid for two rooms, right, for Pyramid View, and we didn't end up getting that. They basically shoved us into this room with three beds, and every day that we kept demanding our room, it was a new excuse. They were very rude to us. I know that in the video you're about to see, you don't, you don't see us, you know, in a bad mood because, you know, we have to suck it up. This is our vacation. We plan a year for this. You know, we want to make to make the best out of yeah, it. Yeah, we're going to make the best out. We don't want to show the ugly side because that doesn't define the whole country, doesn't define Giza. But we did feel uncomfortable because at the New Year's Eve party, they weren't talking to us. The, the staff wasn't talking to us. You know, the manager wasn't talking to us. They greeted everybody else except for us. We and felt neglected. We felt, yeah, and all we did was demand something that we paid for. If you would have told me, hey, I gave your room away, we would have understood. But the mm -hmm. fact that they didn't and they kept like putting a lie after lie and the whole situation was just so sketchy you know luckily for our tour guide and shout out to her she was so cool she helped us fight for our money and we did get refunded again this is just something as a female if you're going by yourself we suggest staying somewhere else in cairo and then getting a tour guide from there and then, then taking you to giza it's not safe i know that other people had other experiences and that's great but this is our experience that we want to share you know for all you female solo travelers is don't stay in giza yeah and if you are traveling with your, your significant other or even a male friend it's okay, stay in Giza, you know, experience it, but we're talking basically just girls because in our hotel, it was nothing but men. Men, like staff, everything, cooks, men, everything was men. We're not saying that, you know, because we're females, they, they treated us that way. We don't know, we really don't know, but we did feel a little bit of sense of, of insecurity even at night when we will go to sleep. We will lock it like really, really good and try to stack some stuff because we just don't know. The hotel was filled with men. And when we would try to um, tell them like, hey, this is not the room we paid for. Like, give us our room. They would just brush us off. Yeah, not only that, like even asking for fresh towels, it was, that was still an issue. So we felt really discriminated and yeah, we, we felt unsafe at that time. And you know, hopefully this, this helps other people. And some people are gonna ask, well, why didn't you stay at the Marriott? No, and the reason why we didn't stay there is because you guys have to remember, these are peak season prices. The Marriott was $500 a night, $600 a night if you wanted the Pyramid View. We don't have that money and a lot of hotels were sold out already. Yeah, if it was up to us, we would have stayed at the Meridian at the airport the whole entire stay the entire state because everybody was so nice. Oh, we love that hotel. But you know what? We're not going to name the hotel that we stayed in that, you know, cost all this because they don't deserve to be put out there in the internet. They don't. But if you would like to know the name, you know, email us and we'll be gladly to tell you, don't stay there. Yeah, or ask us in the comments. If you're a female solo traveler going and you want to know what hotel to avoid, ask us and we'll let you know. But besides that, you know, our Egypt trip was amazing. We're very grateful. We feel blessed that we were able to experience it. Our tour guides were amazing and you perfect Spanish, better than yes. ours. <laughs> That's something that we, that it's like, oh my God. Another tip, language. You get to choose, like, let's say, I mean, we speak Engli English and Spanish. All of our tour guides were Spanish, all of them. And we got to navigate and go through Egypt speaking Spanish the whole time. I don't even think when I, I was able to even speak English. It was just Spanish. It was beautiful, perfect. And they have this for every, every language in the world. You just have to ask your tour guide, hey, do you have somebody who speaks this language? Do you have somebody? And they will find somebody for you. Yeah. And to sum it up, we're very grateful for all the people that we met, all our tour guides, uh, even other tourists that we met there. We had yeah. such an amazing experience and we hope that maybe these tips help you for when you plan your trip to Egypt. And without further ado, here's our vlog. Enjoy!